Hi everyone, my name's Claire. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I recently did what I call my Dutch pour bloom technique um, on this painting here, uh, my spiral, my autumn spiral. And for this painting, what I did was um, uh, laid down some little puddles to create lots of little blooms and then blew them out um, in, in a lovely spiral. So I posted this on YouTube and so many people said to me, you need to do that as a Christmas wreath. Um, so Christmas colours, Christmas wreath. So that is what I'm going to do. So obviously totally different colours, um, greens, red, gold uh, mean Christmas to me. So I'm going to do a wreath with those colours. So really excited. So let me show you the colours I've chosen. These are the colours I'm going to use. For the base, I'm using Pearl White by Dayla Rowney, Graduate Acrylic. I've got two golds. I've got a darker gold, which is Montmartre Gold. And then I've got a lighter one called Iridescent Gold by Pebio Studio Acrylic. So I might use both of them. I might just use one. I'm not really sure yet. I've got another um, Pebio Studio Acrylics colour. Um, which is this one here. It's the iridescent green yellow. Um, I've just run out, so I haven't got any left in a tube to show you. Then Amsterdam phthalo green, and then Alizarin crimson by Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic. So they're all mixed with this, which is um, American Flood Floatrol. Um, so they're all mixed to my Dutch pour consistency. So I'll put the recipe in the description um, of the video. The canvas I'm using is a 50 centimetre square canvas. I just covered the base in pearl white, but I was, I'm reusing a canvas and there was a grey base to it. And the pearl white obviously isn't completely opaque because I could see patches of the colour through it and it, it just wouldn't work at all. So I decided I had to make the, um, the pearl white more opaque. So I mixed it with some um, Amsterdam white mixture and then I've mixed it with a little bit of Amsterdam bronze as well. And I've got this quite unusual, almost really pale pink salmony colour that's come out. I don't, I didn't want just a, a totally white base. The pearl white looks really nice and creamy when it's dried. That's what I'd wanted, but I couldn't do that with this canvas. And I didn't have another canvas unused in this size. So that's what I've had to do. I've mixed a, a totally new colour here, which I'm, I'm quite liking. Um, it's much more opaque now. Well, it's totally opaque now because I can't see the painting underneath anymore. Um, it's struggling a bit with the sides. The sides still look grey, but I've made sure I've got some left. So if there were any patches at the end, or even when it's dry, come to that, um, that aren't covered, I've got some because you have to have some left over because if you don't, you'll never mix that colour again. I, I just poured in some, some bronze. I, I didn't measure it. I've just poured it in. You'd never get to remix it again. So I want a circle. What I did was got my clock off the wall and I drew around my clock onto a piece of paper and I've cut it out. And then I have cut the centre out as well. So I've now got what will be a perfect circle. So I'm just putting that down. I've used wallpaper to, for this. So the wallpaper is really curly, but once it's stuck on the paint, it will. Right, so I'm just checking. I want this to be roughly in the center. So I'm just checking the gaps, top, bottom, left and right to make sure that it's, it looks right. So that's gonna be the rough outline for this wreath. The wreath, I'm going to put the colours, um, a row of um, the blooms around the outside first. This wreath, um, wreath will be going off over the edges. So it's going to be a circle in the centre, but I don't want to see the circle at the edge. I want it to go beyond the canvas so it's dripping over the edge. So this is just the template. I'm going to put some um, paint puddles down around the outside and then I'll pick this up and I can see the grey underneath, so I probably have to patch this up as well. So the colour palette for the for this wreath is really, really neutral, uh, standard, traditional. So two greens, a dark green and a light green for all the foliage, and then red and gold. Um, I love mixing loads of different colours, you know, really making things really nice and fussy, but I just, I, it, it's not for this, it's just not right. So I'm sticking with just the totally, totally traditional colours for Christmas. 
Um, I'm going to try and get these reasonably far apart. I always put my, when this type of technique, put my blooms too close together, always, and they end up being really squashed, which doesn't really matter, but I'm just, I'm giving them a little bit more space so that I can really blow them out and then you can see the lacing. I'm going to be using a cell activator, which is made from Amsterdam white and Australian Floratrol to create some lacing and some bloom effects. Right, that's literally all I needed this template for. So I've got my circle. So I'm going to take this up and get rid of that. Right, I'm now going to put a little drop of the, the iridescent green on each of the puddles. Wow, the lacing is coming out beautifully. It's because it's over that dark green and that dark red, it's looking really pretty. I'm really happy with that. Right, I am so happy that these colours have worked so well. They're not sinking, they're, they're staying really bright and vibrant. The lacing is absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really happy. So what I'll be doing next is adding, I think, some smaller um, puddles in the centre. And then actually probably just some smaller, maybe the one drop puddles around the outside. And then I've just spent quite a long time blowing around just to maintain that really lovely brown shape. It doesn't have to be perfect this time because it's a wreath and wreaths aren't perfect. Perfect If the, um, the leaves, the foliage will stick out in all directions. Um, so actually, I, I don't have to be as strict with it this time. Um, in fact, what I might do, what might work well, is if I just do a little, like a one drop one, but in between each of these flowers. In terms of the space, I think that will work quite well. I've actually done them quite close. I don't think I meant to do them as close. So I think I'll try and first of all blow outwards or into the centre, sorry. But you can see it's just one drop of paint this time going on. Not the two that I did with these other blooms. I'm 
really happy with the collect the combination of colours. They're just so so festive. And then at the end, I'm going to paint, probably hand paint, a big red bow on it to make it really look like a wreath. Um, oops, I just changed my mind like what I'm going to do here. I think I might go for the double drip again on the edge because this time it's got further to go. And I think I might come out a little bit further. That is enough paint. I've finished putting the paint on. Right, I'm actually really quite happy with the central ring here. I am just going to tweak it slightly, just adjust it slightly. Um, and then I'm going to be working mostly on the outside ring. I don't really want more paint on, but I'm going to just try and blow around a little bit to fill some of these gaps. I don't want more paint because I, I, I just don't. I, it'll be too much paint on here. I'm happy with how it just goes over the sides, but you've still got the corners bare. That's exactly what I wanted. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to use a straw just to do a bit of, a bit of tweaking now, a bit of blowing around. Right, I'm really happy now with that circle. So it's it's a definite circle, but it's also quite um, 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 bitty as well, which is what I wanted. Although interestingly, there's more cells on these ones than there is on these. So why is that? I'm just blowing around here more just to get this a little bit more choppy because it seems to be smoother than this side.
So I'm now just going to do some little tiny twiddly bits with the end of a paintbrush. Um, and that would just help to pull it together, I think. So just where there's a little gap, I'm just going to um, just twirl it. And I think that's all I need to do, just a few little twirls, and that will just help to pull it together. I'm so so happy with this it's gone so well um I sometimes do these types of pores and it just doesn't work I can't get the shape the set the colors sink it I'm so happy um the colors have kept the they're holding their own beautifully so considering there's only four colors there's the you can see there the dark green there is the light green there's the red and there is the gold so it's nice and simple but you can see them all um, the lacing is so pretty um, and I've done all the little swirly bits just to pull it together and I think that works so well. Um, the lacing is amazing. It's really um, highlighting the dark, the dark colours, so the dark green and the dark red there. It's very, very shimmery there's, because there's so, well, there's two iridescent colours in each bloom. The gold and the green it's just working so well it's going to be so pretty and shimmery and actually there's a bit of a shimmer in fact let me show you on can you see here so this is that bronzy whitey color that's already dried and can you see how pretty it is that's just on the on the paper here on my worktop so it's wet there dry here and look how pretty it is it's so pretty um, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I hope it dries really well. And then when it's dried, my plan, I think, I might change my mind, but I think I'm just going to paint a nice big red bow um, at the top there. So there is no denying that this is a wreath. <laughs> Great. I'll be back when it's dry. It's finished. I'm so happy with it. I love it. It's definitely... Oh, it's, it's exactly what I wanted. So Christmassy. So as you can see, I've embellished it. I've put on my big red heart, uh, big red bow and also some berries. Um, so let me show you close up. Um, I'll show you the bow first. So I hand painted the bow. Um, I drew a rough sketch of a bow on a piece of card, cut it out and then stenciled it on. Um, and then I just painted it. So just the bright red all over. And then I just added some darker red and then darker red still. And then a few little light reflexes. Um, and then with my gold Posca pen, I just went around the outside. Um, and I think that just lifts it a little bit. It just gives a little bit of separation of the bow compared to the surround. Um, so let me show you all the, the details. To create these berries, all I did was I put um, a bit of paint on the work on my work surface and then I dipped in the bottom of a big felt tip pen into the paint and then I just dabbed it onto the canvas. So you can see all of the spots have got little um, peaks to them. Um, but that I thought oh, that's the best way, the easiest way of making really round berries. Um, and I really feel like the berries just actually pull it together, pull the you've got the bear, the red the deep red in the design here and then the deep red of the bow without the berries i felt it just the bow just looked stuck out a little bit too much it was just too obvious so i think it just blends it because you've got the really intense red we're actually within the wreath now i am so happy with all the colors with the with the lacing um it definitely worked giving the blooms a little bit more space spreading them out because then you could, I could just blow them around so much more um, and you get to keep the lacing. If they're too squashed together, for example, this here, this is a little bit more squashed. So you can see, as I would have blown this one out, it's squashing this one. Um, whereas this, this is the first row, the lacing is just beautiful. So it's definitely worth spreading them out more than I, than I do normally. Um, and I love the little swirly bits. Um, oh, the other thing I did, because I've just got some of the 24 karat gold, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, you can see it. So just here, can you see it's particularly shiny? 
just there and in a few places. So I actually hand painted a little bit of the 24 karat gold. You can see it just here, um, just on top, just to give it a bit of extra sparkle because that 24 karat gold deco art paint is not just iridescent, it's actually sparkly as well. You can see it. So the really sparkly, shiny bits are is the deco art paint. Um, yeah, so, and I'm really happy with this colour. It's, it's like a slight pinky colour, but I just didn't want white. I didn't want the starkness of white. So there it is. So I'm so happy. Please let me know what you think. Please leave me comments. Um, I'd love to know what you think. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.